get into the word. Acts chapter 1. I want to uh, start reading in the fourth verse. This is after Jesus was resurrected. Amen. His body was reconstructed and he was raised up with all power and all authority. And being assembled together with them, verse 4, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Jumping down to verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so you all know that we spent several, several, several weeks uh, on a series called The Spirit of God, and we looked at the Spirit of God uh, in us, we looked at the Spirit of God upon us, we looked at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then we looked at the gifts of the Spirit, uh, and we talked about those in detail. But the one thing that we did not do is to look at how-to. Amen. And that's how we roll here at Living the Word. We always give the how-to. So today, I want to speak from the subject, how to experience the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. We know about it. We talked about it. But now we want to look at how do I experience the power of the Spirit of God? Because the plan of God is for his people to experience and to walk in his power. The church is not supposed to be dead, dry, and powerless. Amen. That's not what Jesus died for. That's what, they, that's what he had before Jesus came. Dead, dry, powerless Amen. They had a form of godliness, but no power. It was, it was written in the letter, but not in, in the spirit. Amen. And so God's plan is for us to operate and to experience his power. And Jesus said, you will receive power when the spirit of God comes upon you. Amen. But we want to talk about some things that we can do to cooperate with the spirit of God and see the power of God in manifestation anybody interested and so we've already talked about in the past two things that I'm not going to talk about because we've talked about them at length but the first is when Jesus said that the power is going to come when you receive the Holy Spirit so we talked about already that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is necessary to see the power of God in manifestation in our lives amen hallelujah that's at least that's what Jesus said and so, so that's the first thing. So we don't need to discuss that. We've talked about that at length. The second thing is here in verse 8, he said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. So the power is for to empower our witness and our service. So in other words, we need to be doing something. Amen. We don't need power to sit down in the pew. We don't need power to just be by ourselves and not share our testimony and our story and what God has done for us. We don't need power for that. But if we get out and we get engaged in preaching the gospel and spreading the word and sharing our testimony and serving him, then that's where the power becomes available. Amen? So we talked about those two. But today I want to talk about six other things that we can do to experience the power of the Spirit of God. Amen? So let's go look at number one. Turn with me to Acts, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. How many of y'all want to experience the power of the Spirit of God? Or experience it in a greater measure than you have and than you are? Hey, listen, there is nothing more frustrating than hearing about the power and not seeing it. Amen. There's nothing more frustrating than hearing about the power of God to set people free and you bound. There ain't nothing more frustrating than hearing about the power of God to heal and you're sick. There is nothing more frustrating than hearing about this power and being defeated. Amen. So we want to experience the power of God and know how to set ourselves up to experience the power of God in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 31. Well, I'll, I'll back up to verse 28. They may not have that because I didn't give them all the way back to 28. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healings? 
Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? So he's talking about these gifts and these offices and the, this power of God. And then he says this in verse 31, but earnestly desire the best gifts. Amen. Earnestly desire. Now flip over with me to 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 1 says this, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So the first thing that we need is we need to have a desire to experience the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. Now listen, desire is, is a particular word. Desire is not, I'd like to have it. Desire is not, I want that. Desire is stronger than it's something I would like or I would want. A desire, it carries with it a connotation of a yearning, of a longing, of a... Of a uh, uh, I, 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 I did something I just can't live without. Amen. And the Bible says that we are to desire. And, and when you look the word up, it's interesting because one of the definitions is to be jealous for. Amen. You're not jealous for something you just, eh, you know, take it or leave it. You're jealous for something you, you got to have. You feel like I got to have it. In fact, the definition of jealous, because when I think of jealous, I think about some crazy dude, you know, overly jealous of his girlfriend, right? Or his wife. Let's say his wife. His wife. I said his wife. But here's one of the definitions of jealous. To be vigilant in guarding a possession, to be concerned about protecting or keeping something. So we should be vigilant about guarding and protecting the things of the Spirit of God. It's more than I want. I just, I would like to see the power of God. It's I can't live without the power of God. Amen. I'm hungry for the power of God. And one of the things that is true about the church in America is there really is a waning desire for the things of God. Amen. There's a way overall. I know there are individuals and there are small groups or groups, but overall, the church in America, the Christians in America have become too busy, too distracted, too preoccupied, and it pushes out our desire for the things of God. But one of the things that we need to experience the power of God, how many of y'all said y'all want to experience the power? We need to have a desire. Amen. God, I need this. I desire this. Amen. Let me hear you say, I need desire. How many of y'all desire the move of the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that's number one, desire. Now turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I want to look here at just one verse and I want you to think about this verse verse 26 first Corinthians first Corinthians 14 26 how is it then brethren whenever you come together whenever you see that whenever whenever you come together each of you has a psalm has a teaching has a tongue has a revelation has an interpretation let all things be done for edification but what does this have to do with anything this is what it has to do with. When we come together as the people of God in any capacity, church, prayer, whatever it is, we don't want to come with a consumer mentality. And that is, I'm coming to sit down and get something, and that's it. And a lot of times, that's how we come in. We come in, sit down, and just serve me. Don't ask me to do nothing. Don't ask me to sing nothing. Don't ask me to shout nothing. Don't ask me to dance. Just I want to be entertained. But let's check the Corinthian church here. It said whenever they came together, they didn't just come to get something. They came to give something. Do you all see that? Whenever you come together, each one of you, has a song, a teaching, a tongue, a revelation. 
They came not just to give, they came not just to get, they came to give what was on the inside of them, what they were full of. Amen. And we need to get that back where I'm not just coming to get, but I'm coming to give. I'm coming because I got something. Amen. Do you have something? And so when they came, they came to give and to receive. Amen. And so we need to, uh, um, to, to make an adjustment to our mentality when we come to church. I'm not just coming to sit down and to be just to be poured into. I got something I need to pour out. Glory to God. And the church at Corinth was a group of people. When they came together, they had so much stuff, Paul had to tell them how to do it the right way. It was just so much stuff that they had when they came, he needed to tell them, all right, it needs to be done in a way that's edifying. Amen. So don't all 30 of y'all get all up at the same time because you're so excited about what you got. Amen. But the point is for us is we need to be coming prepared to give something. One of the things that I did some years ago, this was even before I was in ministry. And so I was thinking about just kind of the things of God and I was thinking about church and just kind of how we did church and and I was I was just talking to the Lord I'm like you know Lord this is your day Sunday is your day and I need to make an adjustment to the way I approach your day because here was my approach I rolled out the bed at the latest possible minute threw on some clothes jumped in the car sped to church and sat down And I said, this is your day. I need to be more prepared. And so what I said, I decided I was going to do, I just decided I was going to, I just felt like this is the, the Lord deserved this. So I started getting up at 7 a.m. Service was at 1030. Now, I'm not in ministry. I'm just, a, I'm just a dude in the pew. But I'm like, I'm getting up at 7. I'm going to spend some time in the Word. I'm going to spend some time in prayer. And then I'm going to church. I was preparing myself so that if God wanted to use me, I was in a place where he can use me. Because see, God can't, it's hard for God to use us if we done wrote, jumped out of bed at the last minute, threw on some clothes, raced to the church and sat down. And we just harried. You know, God needs some peace and some calm and some quiet to get through to us. Really, it's we need it to hear what he's saying. And so I started doing that, and I'm telling you all, the difference it made in my church experience was phenomenal. I was having encounters with God nobody else, when nobody else was because I came in at a different place. So what would it be like if we all came in at a different place? Amen. We all stirred ourselves up before we got here. Amen. And we came just on fire. See, that's how I came in. I came in like, oh, I'm ready. I've been, I've been getting myself amped up for two hours now. Nah, come on, let's go. Amen. And it was a stark difference to the way I experienced church before that when I just, it was, I'm just showing up. Amen. So it changed my, my, my perspective on when I came. And one of the other things I found is that God used me more. Because I was in a place where I could hear what he's saying and sense what the Spirit of God wanted to do. And I knew that I started knowing things about the service that nobody else knew except maybe Pastor Cox. And he was, I'm, I would just know, yep, this is going to be this kind of service today. And sure enough, it was. And sometimes it wasn't. And I thought to myself, yeah, he missed it today. <laughs> Amen. That's all right. I miss it too. So, so coming with a different mentality, I'm not just coming to sit down and see what I can get, but I want to come and be a blessing. I want to be one that's edifying and adding to the service. Amen. So if we want to experience the power of the Spirit of God, we need to come with a mentality that I have something to give. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have something to give. 
And some of us, you know, some people need to just kind of get ready and spend some time, you know, developing and growing before God can really, uh, God will really start to manifest through them. But, but we each need to be either getting ready to be ready to be used or getting ready to be used. And I'm going to say that again. Getting ready to be ready to be used or getting ready to be used. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So that's number two. Don't come with a consumer's mentality. Don't come just to get, come to see, God, I'm, I'm here and I'm willing to give. And, and see, a lot of times, because we have the wrong mindset, that we're not even thinking about what I could give. And so it's harder for God to break through to that, because it's just not something, our mind's not there. But if we came in with, Lord, I'm here and I'm ready. If you need me to say anything, do anything, I'm here and I'm ready. I done spent time with you, I'm ready. Glory to God. Number three. Number three is to spend time praying in the Spirit. Amen. See, one of the things that to, to see the power of God manifested, to experience it, we, need, we have to be in the Spirit. Amen. I said earlier, we can't just be kind of all just in the flesh and in the natural and really see and experience the Spirit of God. We need to be in the Spirit. And praying in the Spirit puts us in the Spirit. Amen. It gets us out of this natural realm and into the realm of the Spirit where it's easier for us to identify what the Spirit wants to say, what the Spirit wants to do, and it positions us to be used by God. How many of you know we need to be positioned to be used by God? We don't just wake up in position. Amen. We need to get into position. And praying in the Spirit helps with that. One of the things, if you pay attention, when we, it, the times in services where we see the manifestation of the Spirit of God and the power of God. One of the things, if you really think about it, you, you'll, you'll recognize that what precedes those times is that people are praying in the Spirit. Either we're all praying in the Spirit or there are a number of individual people praying in the Spirit. And it, it's like it's a catalyst. It jump starts things. Amen? And so praying in the Spirit gets us in a position where we can be used by God and experience his power. See, one of the things that, that we know, a couple of things, I want to just point out a couple of things about the church at Corinth. If you read the book of Corinthians, you, you, two things stand out to you, at least two things. There are other things, but these two things I want to draw attention to today. This was the church, as far as we can tell by Paul's writings, that had the most uh, um, experiences with the power of God and, the, and the, the gifts of the Spirit and all of that kind of stuff. And, and we know this because, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he told them, you come behind in no good gift. There's no other church that, is, that, you are, that you come behind in the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 13, he tells them, look, you can have the, uh, all faith and all knowledge and all wisdom, but if you don't have love, it's pointless. So he's talking to them about the gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 is the gifts of the Spirit chapter. So they had the power of God in manifestation in their services. How is it when you come together? Every one of you has a psalm. Every one of you has a revelation. Every one of you has a tongue. So they operated in the, in the power of God and the gifts of the Spirit to a very high degree. But something else we know about the Corinthian church is they prayed in the Spirit all the time. And we know that because one of the things that he was writing to them about was, y'all doing too much. Amen. Y'all praying in the Spirit and y'all all, all out of order. So we see this, this link between praying in the Spirit and the gifts and the power of God manifesting. Amen. And we, we, we can look even, even more recent than that and more close to home than that. Um, I'm, in a, I'm in a prayer group with some people here at the ministry. And... We, sometimes we pray in person, sometimes we pray over the phone. But I'm telling you, we have had gifts of the Spirit manifesting, the power of God manifesting in our, on the phone prayer. Phone prayer. But one of the things we notice is, it's typically after we spend time praying in the Spirit. Because it's the catalyst, it jump starts it. Amen. In our believers meetings. Some of you all have been to our believers meeting and we've seen the gifts of the Spirit in manifestation and the Spirit of God manifesting himself in the power of God. But one of the things we do, we pray in the Spirit. Amen? And think about the people who you see operating 
in the gifts of the Spirit and operating in the power of God. Just think about the people. Just in our ministry. Just think about the people. And one of the things you'll notice is they pray in the Spirit. Why? Because there's a link, there's a connection. Amen? So the third thing is praying in the Spirit. And we need to spend more time in our individual life and corporately praying in the Spirit. Amen? I try to pray in the Spirit every day. Every day. And I try to pray in the Spirit at least an hour every day. Why? Because that, that positions me. Amen? Glory to God. So that's number three. Number four, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now these next two, we need to really pay attention to. And I mean, we need to pay attention to everything, but I mean us as a ministry. Us individually for where we are. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. I want to just look at one verse. And let's read this verse together. Verse 19. We just want to look at one verse. First Thessalonians 5, 19. Ready? Read. Do not quench the spirit. Amen. He said, do not quench the spirit. Now, the word quench, if you look it up in the Greek, it literally means to extinguish. To extinguish and it also means to bring to an end to reduce to silence or ineffectiveness do not reduce the spirit to silence or ineffectiveness do not constrain constrict restrict the Spirit of God and here's what that means it means if I told you how many times People have come up to me after service and said, you know, I had something from God, but I didn't share it. In the future, just come up to me and say, I quenched the spirit. That's what that means is we had an unction. We, had, we were inspired to say something or to do something, and we, we quenched it. We choked it back. We rendered the spirit of God ineffective. Amen. If we want to experience the power of the Spirit of God, we have to turn loose what the Spirit of God gives us and puts on the inside of us. See, when the Spirit of God gives us something, y'all understand it's for a reason. It's not because he's bored or he's just like, yeah, I feel like doing this. God has a plan for every service. And, and when the Spirit of God moves on us, inspires us to say something or to do something. It's intended to elevate the service and get us closer to experiencing the full plan of God for that service. And here's what happens when we quench the Spirit. Most often, the, spirit, the, the service tops out. It doesn't go any further. It doesn't go any higher. It doesn't go any higher because the Spirit of God was trying to take us to the next level and somebody just, nope, I'm not doing that. Amen. And it's not just about somebody having a prophetic word or a tongue or something like that. Interpret. It's about, it's about the Spirit of God come on you and, and, and you, you get inspired to dance. And you're like, oh no, we don't do that here. I'm not dancing. I dance at home. I ain't doing it here. Amen. Somebody, you know, the Spirit come on somebody to run around just to run. Mm-mm, we too dignified. I just got my hair did. I can't be sweating out my, my perm. <laughs> Quenching the spirit. And it's designed to take the service to another level. And the this, this service tops out because the spirit of God tried to do something or say something and we just refused. I remember uh, some time ago I had a sense that God didn't want me to bring the message that I had been working on and prepared for the service. You know, he does that sometimes, and I'm always like, why couldn't you just tell me this so I didn't have to spend all this time getting ready for it? I know now why he doesn't tell me, because I can't trust y'all. Y'all be done left me out here. And then I'm not ready with a word when people quench the spirit. <laughs> 
That was what the Lord told me. No, I, he didn't tell me that. I, I deduced it. So, but I had, that was the sense I had. Like, yeah, I, I've been working on this, but I think the Lord, I just have a sense the Lord wants to do something different. And so I came out, and that was my mindset. I'm, oh, Lord, we, we, I'm flowing. Wherever you go, that's where we go. I mean, I spent time on this, but I, 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 I want to be your vessel. What you want is what I want. I have no preferences and no desire. I, my desire is, what do you want to do in this service? So that was my sense. And so we got in the service. Praise and worship was really good, really powerful. Uh, and then somebody had a, a word from the Lord, and they came up and shared it. I'm like, yep, we headed, we, we headed down that path. Glory to God. And so somebody gave that, that, that prophetic utterance, and then we just kind of prayed, and we just sat and we waited on God, you know, because we're not in a hurry. We can wait. And we waited. And we waited. And we waited. Nothing happened. So I'm like, okay, well, if you have your Bibles, turn to such and so a place. I mean, because I could have missed it. I could have just felt like that's where we were headed, and I just, it wasn't where we were headed. Amen. So I just went on ahead, preached the word, didn't think nothing of it, being after service. Somebody came up to me and was like, I missed it. Well, what do you mean? I had something from the Spirit, and I didn't share it. I knew it. I know it. I know it. I wasn't supposed to preach today. And so the service didn't get to where God ultimately had us, wanted us to go because we quenched the spirit. Amen? So if we want to see the power of God and experience the power of God, we have, listen, listen family, it takes courage to move by the spirit of God. Amen? You got to have some boldness and you have to be willing to take risks. Amen? Because sometimes we quench because we think, well, what if I really didn't hear that? Well, what if, what if, you know, <laughs> people come up here and say, the Lord is showing me that there's somebody in here, X, Y, and Z, and nobody stands up. Nobody says, that's me. And then after service, they come to you like, that was me. So sometimes it's like, well, what if I do this and nothing happens? Nobody responds. You got to be bold and you got to be courageous and you have to be willing to take risks. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes people won't respond. That's, not, that's between them and God. What, what's on you is the yield to the Spirit of God and don't quench. That's your responsibility. What happens after that is God's responsibility. But we have to have enough courage and boldness to get up and move when he say, says move. Say what he says to say. Do what he says to do. Amen? And then the service gets elevated, and it gets elevated, and it gets elevated, and we get to the full plan of God for that service. Y'all following me? Amen. You know, it's not easy to get up and give a word of God. It's not easy to get up and dance, especially if nobody... It's not easy to get up and say, we need to laugh by faith. That's not easy. Amen. That's not easy. I remember I was in Pennsylvania and I was preaching with, uh, with me and Philip and I, and I had the service that night. Did I have a service that night? No, he had the service that night. And so somehow I wound up on the platform. I don't even remember what happened. But I, w I knew the Lord wants a joy service tonight. I had never done that before. I never, I was petrified. I was like, I ain't doing that. I'm like, Philip, Philip. Philip traveled with Brother Hagen. They had joy services five days a week. He right there. Tell him. I'm not doing it. I'll repent later. <laughs> but I pushed that to the side. And I did it anyway. And I'm thinking, and here was my primary thought. What if I get out here and start laughing and just nut, everybody look at me like I'm a nut? That's my thought. But I pushed that to the side, and we had a glorious service. So it's not easy to yield to the Spirit of God, but it's costly to quench the Spirit. And somebody else's breakthrough might be on the line. Amen? What if Paul and Silas decided they didn't feel like singing in prison? Everybody got set free. What if they decided, you know what, I don't feel like it. I'm not, I don't, I'm not up to it today.
turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. So that was number 3. Was that 3? That was 4? Okay, so this is 5. Y'all ready for number 5? Look at your name and say, you ready for number 5? Ephesians chapter 4. I want to look at just one verse. Ephesians 4, verse 30. Let's read this together. Ephesians 4, 30. Ready? Read. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So now, the last verse was don't quench. Now this says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Now that word grieve is a word that means, see, we often don't think of the Spirit of God and even God as a person. But how many of y'all know the Spirit of God is a person? So here's what grieve means. To be sad, cause deep sadness, to be in heaviness. So it's saying do not cause the Spirit of God to be sad. Do not cause the Spirit of God to be grieved, to be in heaviness. Did you know that we can grieve the Spirit of God? We can cause the Spirit of God to be sad, to feel, to be, and it's really insulted. The Spirit of God to be insulted. Have you ever, parents, have you ever planned to do something for your kids or one of your kids or all your kids and you got it all mad? It's going it's, it's, it's to be good and they're going to love it. And then you come home and they got a bad attitude. You're like, I ain't doing nothing. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> we can do that to the Spirit of God. Because we, we were excited about it, and they caused us this grief, and we're like, I'm just not motivated to do that right now. Maybe we can revisit it another time, but right now I'm not feeling this. We can do that to the Spirit of God. And, and what grieves the Spirit of God is a, a lack of reverence for the Spirit of God and the things of God. Because we, we how many of y'all know the Spirit of God is, is a precious, of great value? The Spirit of God is, is to be reverenced. And, and, and you know, like, like when, when Moses came up to the burning bush, God said, take your shoes off. Because this is holy ground. In other words, you can't, you can't approach this just like it's common, like it's ordinary. How many of y'all know the Spirit of God is precious and, and sensitive? The Spirit of God is very sensitive. And when we refuse, when we fail to reverence Him, I have experienced this where the Spirit of God lifts, where the power of the anointing just lifts. Because, And I know ooh, the Spirit of God was just grieved. I'm going to give you some things that grieve the Spirit of God. Then I'm going to give you some examples. Things that grieve the Spirit of God because they demonstrate a lack of reverence is when you ever been in a church service and it's praise and worship going on and it's some people just having a conversation? Just regular old conversation. It ain't about God. It ain't about the things of God. They're talking about dinner the game that grieves the spirit of God because this is a holy time and y'all just talking that grieves the spirit of God amen you know what else grieves the spirit of God tell me you love me everybody didn't say it I need y'all to say it because y'all might not like me you know what shows a, a, a deep lack of reverence unnecessary late Listen, people, people, people are late. You can be, you know, it happens. You right? You get up, the wig you was gonna wear, it ain't sitting right. So now you gotta figure out what do I do with my hair. <laughs> Amen. You get up and the, the shirt you was planning on wearing with the suit is in the cleaner. So now you gotta figure out, oh man, what am I gonna wear now? Right? You, 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 you just wake up late. How many of y'all ever just woke up late? It happens. But we're talking about unnecessary uh, uh, lateness that just, that communicates this is not important. That grieves the spirit when people come walking in all late. 
just strolling in like every week. That grieves the Spirit of God because what it says is, I'm here, the Spirit of God is here, but these people don't value me. They don't value me. It grieves the Spirit. It grieves the Spirit when people can't stay awake. Y'all don't see the stuff I see. I see people sleep. I don't care. You know, it's between you and God. Don't bother me. I have heard, I've been up here preaching and heard conversations. Heard people having conversations. I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep on going. But it, there's a lack of reverence. Like, they, no, there's no respect. There's no, no awe, no, no sense of value. Amen? These things are, are things that we have to be careful of because they grieve the Spirit. So one day, I was, um, we were, after service, we were going to be praying for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it was a really powerful service. I mean, the Spirit was just, it was just a different atmosphere. And you can tell that, this, oh, this is going to be a humdinger here. Glory to God. And you're excited because you know that the presence of God is, is here. The presence of God is thick. And so we tell everybody, just like we always do, this was some years back, but we're going to be praying for people and ministering for people. So ex leave the sanctuary expeditiously. We understand fellowship is an important part of what we do on Sunday. Just do it out in the, in, in the, in the lobby. No problem, right? So... The church had pretty much emptied out, and, you know, we told people, you know, y'all, if y'all want to just be in the atmosphere, if you don't want to be prayed for, you can hang back. You can hang back and just kind of, you know, help us out, pray, or just kind of be in the, in, the, in, the, in the atmosphere. Cool. So the sanctuary had pretty much emptied out, and I'll never forget it. I will never, I can still see it like it was yesterday. I was sitting right there, just sitting down on that ledge, and I'm praying in the spirit, and all of a sudden, I hear this conversation loud it wasn't like a it was just like hey how long you gonna what this this the other thing just right in the third pew two people just talking just talking and I'm telling y'all I'm not I'm not exaggerating I'm telling y'all I felt the Spirit of God just lift grieved grieved this is not this is not the time for that take that take that outside just go outside with it but just loud, and it wasn't about spiritual things. It was just a conversation. And I'm telling y'all, the Spirit of God lifted, and it took us 30 to 40 minutes to get the atmosphere back. Grieved. Amen. We don't want to grieve the Spirit of God. Amen. I remember uh, listening to Brother Hagen, and he was talking about how, and this he said this happened multiple times where he's got a strong healing anointing I mean a strong healing anointing and I'm praying for people and people are being healed and then some people over there in the back get up start walking around and talking and he said the, the, the anointing left the anointing left me I couldn't pray anymore I had to stop the healing line because the spirit of God was grieved there's no value here for me just like that parent mm, I'm not, I'm not I ain't feeling this anymore so people left the building bound because people did not honor and reverence the Spirit of God. And see, people think, you know what? That's that. I, what I do don't have anything to do with somebody else getting what they got from God. If they where they need to be, they'll get what God has for them. Not true. Because remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and take note... This whole discourse about the body of Christ and how we're one body immediately followed when he talked about the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. So he was saying we're one body and the entire message is, the, 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 the crux of the message is one of the main points was what you do affects me. Right? Because we are one body. If one rejoices, we all rejoice. If one is hurt, we're all hurt. So what you do in a, in a service impacts the service and it could keep people from receiving from God something they desperately need. And we do not want to be the cause of the Spirit of God being grieved and people not getting what they need. And some of us are going to get to heaven and find out, yeah, she didn't get healed because of you. 
Amen. I don't want that to be me. But we have to honor the presence of God and the Spirit of God. We can't just treat this thing like it's just common and ordinary. We have to be mindful about, you know, talking and getting up and walking around and coming in and coming out and coming back in and coming back out and, and, and talking and, and, you know, just, I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen it. I'm not talking about what I think. I've seen people sitting in church looking at church on Facebook. You in church. Why are you looking at, you got the real deal right here. Amen. That's a lack of reverence. So do not grieve the spirit. Amen. All right. Was that five? All right. So let's go to six and then I'll be finished. Turn with me to Acts, the fourth chapter. And so as we're listening to this, you know, some of us, some people might, you know, be further along than others. Some people might think, boy, I need to work on all of these. That's okay. Just start. Amen. Others may think, yeah, I'm doing pretty well, but I think we can all identify at least one thing. You know what? I need to kind of pay that a little bit more attention. Amen. And so just think if we all just picked some things and worked on them, what would it do to the services? Because we're talking about how to experience the power of the Spirit of God. Amen. And we just learned that all of us impacted. So we can't just have like three people going hard and then everybody else like, eh, we won't see it. Y'all following me? All right, Acts chapter 4. I want to look at verse 31, I believe is what I want. But let me get here. Well, I'll set it up first. So this is when Peter and John had uh, gotten arrested and they were threatened. Don't preach or teach anymore in the name of Jesus. Then verse 23, being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priest and the elder said. Verse 24, so when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. So they were arrested. They were threatened. Now, remember, these are the same religious leaders that killed Jesus not long ago. So that's a serious threat. So they go back, it says, to their own companions. And then they pray. And so they're praying and they're like, God, you are God and you are great. And then it says this, verse 29, now, Lord. Look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By stretching out your hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Now get what happened in verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So here's what we have here. This is Peter and John, and they went to their companions. And so they're in this group, in this room, and they're filled with the Spirit. But this is the same group that was filled with the Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Am I right about it? Same group. So what this tells us is, is that we can receive, we can be filled with the Spirit more than once. It's not just a one-time event. Amen? And one of the things that positions us that we can do to experience the power of the Spirit of God is some people just need to be filled. They need a refilling. Amen? It was years ago, and they have not maintained the filling. Because, listen, there's a difference between being filled and being full. Y'all hear me? There's a difference between having experience, having an experience where you were filled with the Spirit and being full. So let me, let me, let me show you. Turn to Acts chapter 6. Verse 3. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation. What? Not having been filled, 
or not who were filled, but who are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Now jump down to verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. He was full. Amen. So we need to not focus on was I filled on a particular day at a particular time and ask, am I full? Turn to Acts chapter 11. Verse 22, then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all, encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he, Barnabas, was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith. So we need to be full of the Holy Spirit, and some people have not maintained the fullness and they just need to be filled again just like those people in Acts chapter 4 you can there's an initial filling but then there can be many refillings amen turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5 look at your name and say are you fool So in Ephesians chapter 5, I want to read verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, if you look that word up and study it out in the Greek, what you find is the word filled is a word that has the connotation. It's a continuous filling. So what it's saying is be being filled or be full. Amen. Be full of the Spirit. So, we need to be full of the Spirit to help us experience the power of the Spirit of God. And we can be refilled if we are no longer full. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so there are people who were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They spoke with other tongues 15 years ago and they haven't spoken since. Refilling. Refilling. Amen. Glory to God. I'm thankful that the Lord will fill us multiple times. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And so, and so the sixth thing and the final thing that I'm going to talk about today that we can do to help experience the power of the Spirit of God is to be refilled. Amen. Amen. Verses move forward, move forward together. 